Hey champs, welcome to 90 plus my tuition app. Have you heard of the word sports? What exactly is sports? Before that, let's meet Rahul. Rahul is going to Delhi, that to buy a car. Oh my god, the car stopped. I can see Rahul is getting down and started to push the car. What's happening here? Oh wow, car has started moving forward. Let's see some more examples. Can you see two girls are pushing each other? You can also see a boy is pulling the door. Similarly, the man and the cow are pulling each other. Now, what do you observe in all these examples? They are either pushing or pulling the objects, right? That means they are applying some force on those objects. Oh yeah, that is why the objects are changing their position. Now, can you tell me what is force? A force is a push or pull exerted by an object on another object. In this chapter, we are going to deal with force and pressure. So guys, what do you think how force arises? Have a look at here. What do you see? A boy is pulling the door, right? Look at him carefully. I have a question for you. What if he simply stands in front of the door? Will it open? No, right? So, to open the door, he has to pull it. That means he has to apply some force on the door. We can also see here two girls are pushing each other. Which means they are applying some force on each other. Now, can we say with these two examples, force arises due to the interaction between at least two objects. Now, you got an idea about force. Whenever we talk about force, there exist two factors. They are magnitude and direction. Again, what do they mean? Simple. Magnitude is a measure of how much force you are applying on an object. And it's just a number. Now, the word direction means in which direction you are applying force. Got it? Now, guys, have a look at here. What do you see? A boy is pushing a box and it is moving. That means he is applying some force on that box. And it is moving in that direction only. But I have a doubt. Can you tell me what if two boys are pushing that box in two opposite directions with the same force? Will it move? No, right? So, why is it not moving? So guys, here you go. The reason is that when two forces act on a body in opposite directions, then the net force acting on that body becomes the difference between the two forces. Here, what is net force? Let's see. Net force means the sum of the forces acting on that body from all the directions. Here, in this example, two boys are applying equal forces in opposite directions, right? Now, the net force acting on that box becomes zero. And the result is, the box remains at rest. Guys, do you want to know what happens when a force apply on a body? Okay, let me tell you. We all eat chapatis, right? Do you know how your mom prepares a healthy chapati? See here. First, she mixes the dough with the water. After that, she makes a round balls of a dough. Then, she rolls it into a Chapati. Can you tell me what makes the dough balls turn into a round chapati? Simple. Here, she is applying some force on the dough, which in turn changes its shape. With this example, can we say a force can change the shape of the object? Wow, it's very interesting, right? I'm too curious to know what else can force do. Aren't you? Guys, have a look at here. Two boys are playing with a ball. Initially, the ball is at rest. One boy came 
and starts hitting the ball. The ball starts moving. After some time, he again hits that ball. Now the ball starts moving faster. But the second boy came and catches that ball with his hands. Hence, the speed of that ball has decreased and came to rest. What do you think? Why does that ball came to rest? The reason is, the second boy applied force on that ball opposite to the direction of its motion. That is why the speed of that ball has decreased and came to rest. With this observation, can we say a force can change the speed of an object? Because when we apply force on an object on the same direction of its motion, it gains speed. But when we apply force on an object in the opposite direction of its motion, then the speed of that object will decrease. Guys, let's do an activity. For that, you need to take a ball and place it on a table. Now, to make this ball move, just give it a push. See, now it is moving. What happens if I place a scale on its path? Will it stop? No, right? But if you see this carefully, it is changing its direction. Why does this happen? Simple. Here, the scale placed here applied some force on the ball. That is why the ball changing its direction. With this observation, we can say that force can also change the direction of an object. Wow! After performing all these activities, we can say that a force can change the state of motion of an object. Oh wait, what is the state of motion again? Let's see. When do we say an object is at rest or an object is in motion? Here, a bike is moving. That means it is changing its position with respect to time. Hence, it is in motion. If you look at here, a boy sitting under a tree. Can we say he is in motion? No, because he is not changing his position with respect to time. Hence, he is at rest. State of rest is also considered as state of motion with zero speed. An object may be at rest or may be in motion. Both are considered as state of motion of an object. I hope you understand what is state of motion. Till now we have discussed force and its applications and state of motion, right? Now we are going to discuss about different types of forces. Yes, what you have heard is correct. There are two types of forces. They are contact forces and non-contact forces. Now, what are contact forces? Let's see. See, here we have a bucket. Can you lift this bucket without touching it? If you do this, for sure you are a musician. But we can't do this, right? So, to lift this bucket, we have to touch it first. Here, where does this force come? This force come from our hand, which means the muscles in our hand. So, the force resulting due to the muscles in our hand is called muscular force. And this force is a contact force. So, tell me, are there other types of contact forces? Let's see some cases. Here, we have a ball. If we throw this ball on the ground, what happens? The ball starts moving and after some time, it comes to rest. Fine. Let's see one more thing. Suppose you are driving a car on the road. Now you want to stop that car. What do you do? You will apply brakes, right? Now the car stops as soon as the brakes are applied. In these two examples, what do you notice? Have you observed any force acting on them? Correct. There is no force acting on them. Still, their speeds are decreased and came to rest. What is the reason for change in their state of motion? Don't you want to know? Okay, let me tell you. Here, a force is applied opposite to its 
direction of motion. That is why the objects came to rest. Here, this force is called friction. Yes, the reason for change in their state of motion is a force of friction between the surface of the ball and the ground or the tires of the car and the ground. This force of friction is always acts opposite to the state of motion. Now, you have understood what are contact forces, right? Then, what about non-contact forces? Okay, tell me, is it necessary to be in a contact with an object to apply force on it? Before that, let's do an activity. First, take two magnets and place one magnet on three pencils. Here, these pencils act like rollers. Bring another magnet close to the first one. See what happens here? The first magnet moves away. Fine. Let's try with another side. Is it still moves away? No. And also they are coming closer. What is the reason for this? We have studied in class 6 that like poles of two magnets always repel each other. But unlike poles attract each other, right? So the same thing is happening here. When we bring two light poles together, they are repelling each other, which means pushing. When we bring two unlight poles together, they are attracting each other, which means they are pulling each other. So, here you can clearly observe a push and pull process, right? Which means a force is acting on them and the force exerted by magnets is a non-contact force. This force is called magnetic force. So guys, tell me, is there other type of non-contact forces? Yes, there are. They are electrostatic force and gravitational force. But what are they? To understand them, let's do an activity. For that, take a long plastic straw. We'll cut it into two equal parts. After that, Take this first part and suspended it like this. Now, rub this free end of the straw with a paper sheet. Bring this rubber free end close to the suspended one. Did you see what happened here? The suspended straw moved slightly towards the free end. Now, rub this free end of the suspended straw with a paper sheet. Let's see what happens if we bring these two straws together. They are moving away. Can you tell me what exactly has happened here? Correct. When we rubbed a free end of the second straw, it acquired electric charge. Hence, the charged end of the straw attracts the uncharged end of the straw. This force exerted by a charged body on uncharged body is called electrostatic force. This electrostatic force is another example of non-contact forces. Guys, have a look at here. What do you see? Fruits are falling down from the trees, right? I have a question for you. Is there anyone pushing them down? No, right? Then why are they coming down? Why don't they go up? The reason behind this is gravitation, which means the earth attracts all the objects towards its center and the force exerted by the earth is called gravitational force. This is an attractive force and it is also an example for non-contact forces. Guys, how many of you know force and pressure are two different quantities? Yes, they both are two different quantities. Okay. Let's understand this by an examples. Let's meet Neha. Neha is hungry. Her mother gave her an apple and asked her to cut it. She went to the kitchen and found these tools. They are knife, a metal rod and a hammer. Can you suggest her a correct tool to cut the apple? Yes, absolutely correct. Knife is the correct tool to cut the apple. She takes the knife and applies some force on it. See, she cuts the apple into two pieces. Here I have a question for you. 
What if she chooses a metal rod instead of a knife? Will she be able to cut the apple? No, right? So, what is the reason? Simple. The cross-sectional area of rod is larger than the knife. So, the rod applies force on the apple over a larger area. But, if we apply force over a smaller area on the apple, the resulting force acting on that apple is larger. As a result, the apple cut into two pieces. Considering this fact, the word pressure is defined as force divided by the area on which it is acting. We can also define pressure as force per unit area on which it is acting. And the unit of pressure is Pascal. As you can see, the area is in the denominator. If the area is small, the pressure acting on the surface is very large. But if the area is large, then the pressure will be very less. Here, we only consider the forces which acts perpendicularly to the surface of the object. Now, you might understand why porters place a round piece of cloth over their head. They do because they can increase the area of contact of the load. By doing this, they may feel less weight. Here, we have seen pressure in solids. But, do liquids and gases also exert pressure? To understand this, let's do some activities. For that, take a long glass tube and a balloon. Make sure that the length of the tube is 25 centimeters and the diameter is 5 centimeters. Now, stretch the balloon over the end of the tube and keep it vertically like this. Hold it in the middle. Let's pour some water into the tube. What do you observe? The balloon bulged right and note down the water reading. Repeat this activity several times and observe the water. You can see the balloon bulged out more and more as the more water is added to the tube. This bulging of balloon indicates the pressure exerted by the water on the balloon. With this, can we say liquids also exert pressure on the walls of the container? So guys, what about gases then? Do gases also exert pressure on the walls of the container? Before that, let's meet Sonu. Sonu bought two balloons, but one of them was damaged, which means it has holes. Sonu tried to fill the gases in the both balloons. What do you think? Will she be able to inflate the two balloons? Correct. She blew one balloon well, but she failed to inflate the damaged one. What do you observe here? Here, in first balloon, the gases exert pressure on the walls of the balloon. So, with this observation, we can conclude that gases also exert pressure on the walls of the container. Guys, you know what? We are all surrounded by air from all the directions. This envelope of air around us is called atmosphere. The pressure exerted by the air is called atmospheric pressure. But, how big or small is this atmospheric pressure? Let's have a look. For that, let's take a rubber circle. And it looks like a small rubber cup. Press it hard over a smooth surface. Does it stick? Yes, it does. Now, try to pull it off the surface. Can you do it? Yes, you can. But, you have to apply larger force. When you press it on the surface, the atmospheric pressure acts on it. But when you try to pull it off, you have to apply larger force to overcome this atmospheric pressure. In fact, if there was no air between the circle and surface, it would be difficult for any human being to pull it off. Now, you might have got an idea about how big this atmospheric pressure is. I hope you understood all the topics in this chapter. We will be with another interesting chapter.
Until then, keep learning.